So that's the no name track. Um, it's a little bit harder than the Sandy Creek that you come in and it's probably about a couple of k's up further. Just, um, I'd be pretty mindful about driving that when it's been raining, that's for sure, because mate, there's a big washout. So I missed a section there. It's just a little bit too big for the troopy. Anyway, we're down on the, um, the, like the lower plains, I suppose, or the flood plains of the Snow River now anyway, so it shouldn't be too far away from that camp. Okay, just had a rookie moment. Um, set the awning up and then realized all the wood's up on the roof. So I had to go uh, pull the awning down a little bit to get that wood off. Uh, same now, they got some shovel up there now too. But you know, uh, same, possibly a bit of rain tonight. Uh, five to 10 mil. We're starting to bank up over here now. It's getting a little bit dark over the hills there, so we'll see how we go. Be a good test for the awning anyway. Okay, I went the old sandbag trick instead. A couple of shopping bags, buried them. Hopefully they hold up. It doesn't need too much weight, just want to get the water off it, that's all. So, just starting to build up over there. It's only time for a beer, I reckon. It is definitely the best sound ever. What do you reckon? Should go for a swim or what? A fair bit of snow melting there, be a bit cold.
Got a couple issues. Um, I think the tide's coming in. There's no water there before. I'll put a stick over here just to check out, make sure that we don't get flooded. But the fire pit's got water in it at the moment. So as I was saying, the water's coming up. So down here. There was no water there when I come and set up and dug this fire pit and there's a little bit of moisture getting to the bottom of the fire pit as well so what I do is I put a stick over here just as a bit of a guide to see the water's coming up um, look I know I jumped in there before for a swim but I'm pretty sure my body weight wouldn't affect that that much I just put a little stick over here as well, just to keep an eye on it here. Oh, we've had no... Looks like there's been no rain. Um, but obviously there's been a fair bit of snow melt up there around Perisher and Threadbrae. They got eight centimetres there a couple of nights ago, and it's been beautiful weather. It's been windy, obviously, but I suppose there's a fair bit of snow melt. And I probably could expect this to come up a little bit. Time will tell, I suppose. Anyway, it's a bit of excitement. Um, pretty happy with this spot. Beautiful. I might even just get a rod out real quick and have a bit of a flick. Um, I'll see how we go, and then I'm gonna sit back, have a couple of beers, light this fire. Probably fill my fire pit in a little bit. So. I right, can get it going and um, yeah, chill out for a while. So that's why I've come down here, just a nice, easy overnight or maybe possibly two nights and just kick back and reset. Um, yeah. All right, cheers, guys. I filled that fire pit in. Dug one on higher ground. <laughs> She's uh, coming up all right. Just keep an eye on it. How much is eight centimetres worth of snow going to melt when it comes down the Snow River? But it's got to go through Lake Jindabyne and that first. So they're only releasing so much water at a time. But they, they, they were releasing it. There was a massive big fountain of water coming out when I crossed the, the weir or what do you want to call it at Jindabyne. So... There's a lot more water coming down than it normally is, but anyway, I've got a fire pit now. It's well and truly, well and truly coming in. What I'll do is I'll dig a little path through here. It's a bit of a natural causeway through here, natural little like low point. I'll just dig it out. So if we get rain, it, it won't come in here, hopefully, and we'll see what happens, eh? Be like the old day when you used to go camping, just dig moats around your tents and that. Yeah, I'll well, tell you what, I've got some decisions to make here. It is coming up pretty fast. I reckon I'm a foot. Probably close to a foot above the water level at the moment, so what time we got? Uh, about four o'clock, I think. It's half past four. I've been here hour or so, hour and a half, and it's come up an inch. 12 hours, that's a foot. That's gonna be pretty close, I reckon. I can drive out of here, because there's no drama, freestanding awning, which is pretty handy. So, I 
I might just go up on the grass up here. It's going to spoil the whole atmosphere of me being down here on the sandy beach, but I think I'm going to play it safe, so... I'm going to pack up, head up top up there, and um, set up up there and get this fire going before the sun goes down, so... Pain in the ass. All right. As you can see, that was a couple of inches away before. Now it's lapping past it. And this bit of water over here, it's, that was dry as before. It's just dug a new fire pit as well. What do you guys reckon? <laughs> Drop, put a comment below. Should I stay or should I move up there? Whatever you put in the comment, I'll do. That's not going to work, is it? Anyway, all right. We'll have one more beer and think about it. What could possibly go wrong? That's camp now. That was about half an hour, I think, to get that arm set up there. So it's not too bad, really. The freestanding awning's a bonus. So anyway, look, I've got the fire going. I'm just going to um, go down for a quick flick. See how I go. I don't, not expecting to catch any fish, but yeah, we'll go down and have a crack anyway. Uh, I'm using a double clutcher. Uh, might be a little bit too big. I think 65 mils is what they're saying that the trout and the bass go for. I think it might have a 90 mil one on your line at the moment, but uh, I'm just going to have a crack at it anyway and see how we go. So, all right, Joel, head down here. I've cleaned up down there. This, all my sandbags are out and everything's backfilled in apart from the fire pit. And um, yeah, we'll see how we go. All right, cheers. Tell you what, this is not the same being up here in this grassed area as it is down there in the sand. It's still a beautiful outlook, but I'm hoping I've done the right thing by coming up here. I hope that floods. I hope the whole lot goes under. Otherwise, I'll be pretty pissed off, I reckon. Anyway, time will tell. All right, let's just go down and check this uh, water level. See if I made the right decision. What time is it? It's 5.30, so that's what, an hour? Or was it two hours since I started packing up? So I reckon it's probably come up. I reckon it has to be two inches. Here's that peg over here, the stick I put in there. 
it's well and truly under and you come over here all that area that used to be like an island there that's just all gone I reckon your fire pit here get a bit of moisture I reckon I might have made the right decision still not happy about it but anyway Looks like a bit of water's running through the campsite. It hasn't flooded, but there's definitely water running through the drain I dug. <laughs> we'll go check that out. Well, I think I made the right decision just quietly. There's been a lot more water running through here than what you actually you think. I'll grab the camera and I'll show you. There's had a heap of water through here. The back of my troopy tires were parked right there. And that's the water level. So my fire pit would have been under. All over here. There. Sun's starting to poke its head through. Looks like it's going to be a crack of a day. Had a little bit of rain last night. Uh, woke up about three times just throughout the night with rain on the awning. Nothing too drastic. So, good decision? Yes, definitely. Be nothing worse trying to sleep during the night than hearing that water come running through your campsite. Even though I would have been dry on the swag, in the swag and around the swag was dry, but you never know when that water's gonna stop rising, I suppose. So, um, definitely glad I come up here. Sort of ruined the whole sleeping on the beach thing, but there's plenty of other spots around here as well, which are some cracking spots, camp spots, so, you never know, another time when I'm coming home. From work at that, it's on the way home. It's one of those roads I'd rather put some gravel in my travel. You know, or anyway, but the highway, as uh, Red Dust Adventures say, Brad and Fee. Um, definitely try something different. I'm gonna go for a quick flick. See how I say flick, not fish. Um, I've got a new shirt made up for me from As, from Quick As. They haven't ever laugh about it, so I'll put that on and it's pretty appropriate. 
All right, let's see if I can find it. All right, so obviously quick as one, but here we go. This is this is more than appropriate, I think. Tell me what you reckon. The I caught fuck all fishing club or something. Lifetime member. I hope I can prove him wrong, eh? Oh, I'm gonna try off a spinner. Uh, gonna go down to the bank down here and see if I can cast back up into that flat water. The little eddy there. Give that a shot. Don't know what I'm talking about, but. It is a pretty spectacular spot, eh? Okay, we're on our way out. No, this is a Sandy Creek track. It's not the section where it gets real difficult. It's back behind us. You know when you get to that because it's actually like a Sandy Creek bed to drive up and then for about half a K or so, then it starts to get a couple of rollovers and then it gets a bit tricky. So I'm just heading out this way. It's not a bad drive. There's some big washouts in here, but there's a couple of little chicken tracks around them as well. So I'll show you this as we head out.
is at uh, Sandy Creek track to an end. I'm coming up to Snowy Road, which takes you down to Stook and Boogan. I'm leaving it here. That's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Until next time, uh, yeah, stay safe and keep well. Cheers, guys. Hey, I heard you want to leave this place, but we grew up.